of the Academic uh, Staff Steering Committee, and I'm um, really excited to see so many faces here, and we are definitely going to get a jump start. I just want to real quickly introduce our um, uh, steering uh, committee. We've got Shana, Dr. Ward, we've got Donna over there, Secretary, and Marissa, you want to stand up? Yeah. Um, Cynthia is also not here, but she's also our co-chair. So, um, like you said, we're going to get it started. I know we're, some of us are limited on time, so I'm going to turn it over to John. Well, thank you everyone for coming. We appreciate that you're here. Today, as you can see, we're going to talk about your professional record. Okay, that's used for many things um, in your career here at Wayne State as an academic staff member. Um, also, the professional record, um, I don't know if any of you have yours with you. Um, what we'll be doing later on is actually having some of our experts um, who work through the ESS promotion process actually come around the tables and help if you have any questions with your professional record. Last year we actually did this workshop professional record later on in the year. But we switched it to the fall this time since you should really start getting, you know, working on your professional record now and because it's used for other things, right? So again, my name is Dawn Niedermiller and Shauna, Peter and I, um, her and I are going to be going through these slides with you. So hopefully what you'll get out of this workshop are a few items here. We would like to discuss the multiple purposes and the audiences of the professional record, which we call PR. And there's also some common areas of what we call divergent or non-standard treatment of activities. So what does that mean? Well, as you're listing things on your professional record, you may not be sure if they fall into you know, which category. Is it professional development or achievement? Is it job performance? Is it service? Is it service to the university, community, department, and so on? So we'll talk about some of those um, areas, where we should put some of those activities. Also, we hope that you come out of this workshop knowing how to reconcile what we call apparently inconsistent advice. So sometimes you may ask one person, perhaps in your department, a question, and you get an answer about your professional record. But then when you talk to someone in the college or someone else in a different department, you get a different answer. And it can be very confusing, right? So if you have any of those differences, um, during the workshop, we'll help reconcile those. Another thing that we want to talk about here is how factors, job description, selective salary actually guides you, okay? That guides the content of your professional record. And there's companion documents Okay, along with your professional record, such as your three-year uh, three report, which could be like your current activities, or your three-year summary. Also, if you're going to go up for ESS, which um, we'll talk about at a different workshop, we'll go into more detail about that, um, and promotion. So you have to uh, submit personal statements. And often when you have a personal statement, you'll make reference to your professional record. Okay, so that ties in with it. And we want to make sure that these companion documents, they all complement your professional record. They all go together. So what is it? What is a professional record? How many people here are new academic staff members? Okay, wonderful. That's great. Now, last year when we had this workshop, we actually had more people. But actually, a good thing happened. Um, some of the employees actually obtained their ESS and their promotion. And so some of them are not here today. But of course, we have new people that come in. So especially for the newer people, it's really important what we have to say here today about your professional record. And we have all this support system here, all these people to help you when you have questions. Okay? The professional record, it documents various things. Um, you should have all picked up a copy. It's a two-sided copy. And that's the template of the professional record from the provost website. Okay? This is the format that you want to use. Now, not all of these items listed here may apply to you, okay? <laughs> if they don't apply to you, you can't simply erase it from the template. You either leave it blank underneath it, or you put N slash A, not applicable, okay? So again, you want to follow, actually, this template from the Provost website. On this template, you'll see various things. Your education, okay, any post-secondary degrees, associates, bachelor's, master's, PhD, and any certificates. Now, this isn't just like a certificate um, if you've attended a workshop, okay? okay? It's actually if you have a certificate, you know, for some training or some certification process. Like your ATA training. Yeah, ATA training is excellent, yep. Advising Training Academy. Training, right, yeah. 
Um, job performance is also listed on your professional record, very, very important, where you list your main duties and your responsibilities. Um, also on this professional record, your professional development or achievement is listed. So if you attend or participate in a workshop, even coming here, okay, you can put that down on your professional record. Any uh, conferences, okay, um, any committees that you're on, and any professional memberships. If anyone's here a member of like Nakata or you know, all the other professional um, organizations, you should put those down as well. Also your professional, professional record has a section for service, as you can see on that template. And there's service to the university, the school, the college, the division, and also to your community. And sometimes as you are filling out your professional record, this is where some confusion can come in. Like, where do I put these extra things that I do? Are they relevant to Wayne State or what I do at Wayne State? And that's where we can help you as well. And there's also a section for honors and awards, if you have any. How is the professional record created? Well, by you, right? Okay. Um, so the academic staff member, you, you're the one that creates this. Again, the template, the copy that you have, is available from the Provost website. And you want to update this regularly after professional development events. In fact, after every event that you think or deem that can be used for your professional record, you want to be trying to update that. If not daily, weekly, if you start to wait till monthly or especially yearly at the end, I highly don't recommend doing that, okay? Someone told me um, when I first started here, I'm approaching my fifth year, that you should have like a file drawer or a folder. And every time you attend an event, go back to your office and put it right there in front. Or make a copy of it or scan it. And start scanning everything digitally so that later on you can use that to submit it. Also, um, and again, as uh, Sean mentioned, any training sessions, okay, um, you want to put those also on your professional <coughs> record. Why is it necessary? Well, it's necessary because of many reasons, as you can see here. You have an annual review, which your professional record will be requested, okay, from your supervisor. And it's also needed for salary increases, for merit raises, and for promotion and ESS, Employment Security Status, which is similar to uh, tenure for faculty members. And then also, it's necessary, um, and as you're doing this, you want to consider your audience, right? Who's actually going to be reading your professional record, your you know, professional record? And what other documents do you need? When is it due? This, to me, was always very confusing. And it seemed like I could never get this figured out, okay? And the reason why is I would hear different things from different people, because it does vary, okay? So it depends, your professional record, when it's due, depends on what, first of all, you're using it for. If you're using it for ESS, promotion, or annual review every year. Um, my chair wants my annual review by May for sure of every year. Some departments say as early as February, and I've heard some other departments in my college say they want their professional record by even the end of the year, by December. So it really depends. Make sure you're connecting and communicating with your supervisor to find out when your professional record is actually due. And selective salary also. Um, you'll get most of this information from your chair or your supervisor will let you know when certain things are due. However, you need to be proactive about finding out when these are due, the professional records due for these various events. Where is it submitted? Okay, so depending on your department or your chair for your committee, it can be for ESS, which is the Employment Security Status. I'll probably give you the acronym and what it means each and every time I say it because I like to remember it. But you're probably going to submit it to either the business office at your college or department or to your dean's office. For me at the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, I submitted to the dean's office. I didn't actually submit it though. My, the dean, I have an assistant dean who is my supervisor and she was the one that forwarded all of my documentation up to the dean's office for processing into a flash drive that they sent away. And what I was doing at that time specifically was promotion. Um, with selective salary, I believe it still goes, that goes to the business office. Selective salary is the time where you get your increases, your, your annual increases. It is separate from your annual review and we do have separate uh, workshops that go more into detail about those different things. 
But um, for my annual review, it just goes to my supervisor. So the, the assistant dean. So it's part of the dean's office, but not quite. <clears throat> Academic personnel file um, for the school department or provost office, that goes to them, I guess, in, in general, because they need to know what, what's going on. With selective salary, they get a copy. Um, with promotion, they get a copy. Anything else? Yeah. So, factors. Now, each of us have factors that we work under. There are some general factors, but the main factors for what your job description is, what you do, what things you're supposed to be doing, that pretty much comes from your office. So if you are a single advisor in a department, you need to sit down with your supervisor and kind of go through those things so that you can develop your factors. There are examples in different places. Um, they're not always exactly the same. You know, there are certain similarities, but for me, I do some things that I know they don't do in class, uh, College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Um, using the university college factors can be your starting point, but again, tailor those factors so that you have them when it's time for you to go through selective salary process, when it's time for you to go through the ESS process, and when it's time for you to go through promotion process, and sometimes those two happen together, the ESS and promotion. Um, there's a little note there. The guidelines may contradict more specific factors when available. However, they are drafted in collaboration with the union based on factors from multiple units. So they do take that into account. In their absence of unit factors, they may provide additional guidance. But <coughs> if you are a single tenant in your unit, you're going to come up with those factors and they can help guide you through that process, basically. Start creating a professional record on day one of your academic staff position. So we all know you guys have started a professional record, right? I know. <laughs> Continue to update it regularly, as Don mentioned before. I actually do mine quarterly because I feel like I'm just so busy. Uh, but I do have a reminder that tells me, update your record. It's, it's been important. So there is something that makes sure that I get that done that I have already set up. So. If you can do it weekly, if there's something to put in there, you just check in to see what's going on that week. That's perfectly fine. For me, not so much. But I'm not best practices, except for the reminder part. I think that's a good practice. So you can remind yourself to do it. <laughs> um, seek the advice of other academic staff. Yes, you might get conflicting information, but it can give you some form of guidance. If they're already in your unit, golden. Especially if they've been there a while and, and got things set up. I know someone who was in an area where they didn't have that because people have been changed out kind of regularly. So once they set it up, it was there in place for any new employees that came in. Um, a mentor who has attained promotion or ESS is invaluable because they at least have an idea of the process in your area or in general. So even if you can get the process in general so that you can figure out what you need as far as Maybe you still need to have the factors so you can figure out how to, to complete that part. Um, they, can, they can help you, guide you through that, that process. Um, have other, others review it for typographical effort, F errors or inconsistencies. That's always good. You know, you, someone's looking at your professional record and you have all type of typos. They're distracted by the typos. Why distract them from all of your brilliance? So, make sure it's, it's reviewed that your, your edits, have somebody, even your mentor. Your mentor would be a good person to send it to and say, hey, what do you think about this? Is it okay? Should I add anything? Etc. Common issues of concern. Personal information. Always use your Wayne State email address. Okay? Even if you have an alias, put the alias up there because the alias will still get to you. But always use your Wayne State email address because this is basically a document that you'll be using in Wayne State for Wayne State things. Um, Dawn already mentioned we're not talking certificates of appreciation, certificates of attendance, we're thinking certifications for work or training that you've done and you want that listed there. Description of current position responsibilities. This kind of goes into your factors a little bit, just a little bit. Because if you know what's expected, then you know what you do, and then you know what you do above and beyond what you do, okay? Consider position summary if, if appropriate. Most of you, upon 
when applying for the job, saw a description. I'm assuming. I know my boss says boss. Okay. Um, so you can kind of use that when appropriate. List responsibility. Responsibilities in a way that demonstrates that you have accomplishments. So again, showing how golden you are to your own horn is stated here, being able to go through that and say, yes, I've done this, and on top of that, I've uh, developed this to go with it, and you know, just go as far as you can. Balance, so not every detail or possible bullet from the position is needed or helpful. I have almost every bullet point, that's just me. However, to make it more concise, so that you don't end up with 10 pages of professional record, you do want to try to be more precise. My professional record is actually only two still, even though I have what I consider the bullet point drama. Um, common issues, the, we'll continue with the common issues of concern. Your WSU employment history. So if you move from department to department, make sure you note that. If you stay in the same department, that's perfectly fine, not a problem, note it. Um, prior employment outside of Wayne State University. Yes, I guess. I didn't I don't think I really have that much on mine. Do you have a lot of prior on yours? Mm -hmm. I think just something that listed a management position, but yeah. other than that, you don't want to go back. You don't want to go back to oh, no, that's right. what I was right. to say. Yeah. You don't have to go back to every job that you No, right, right, right. Oh, right. Obviously, last I would say, yeah. 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 And I haven't had that many, so my last five years is Wayne State, so, you know, it's, I guess it, it varies. But if you think it would have some something that would help promote you in a way, like she said she used management on hers. Um, yeah, go ahead, list it. I'm not saying leave anything young out, since we're saying five years. But, you know, if you can promote it in a way, then go ahead and do that. That would be beneficial to you. Go ahead. Um, professional, professional societies and membership. Include dates to show whether the membership is current or previous active status. So we are talking NACADA, the National Academic, some, I can't remember what it all stands for. It, it, oh, it's all together, like MIACADA, right? Yeah, National Advising Association. MIACADA is the Michigan Advising, um, Michigan Advising MIACADA. Academic Staff Association, sorry. Michigan Academic Advising, yeah. Um, that's another one. ACPA, <laughs> Academic Professional. Academic College Personnel American Association. Yeah. American. And then American. 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 And then we ACPA all, in Michigan. We go by acronyms, so there's a billion of them. There and I'm trying to give them to you so you can look them up later if you're yeah. not already a member. And there's one for counseling, and yeah. one for financial aid. Yeah, so there, there are quite a few out here, and I was just trying to throw you a couple bones. But um, <laughs> you can consult, see, the identify acronyms, which I was attempting to do. <laughs> but on your professional record, when you do list them, you want to name, you want to have them the full name, right? Um, then you can put in parentheses our favorite acronyms, but for people who don't know what we do, like the provost office for real for real, they might say, oh, I've heard of Zakata, but he's thinking of NASPA. You know what I'm saying? So let them know exactly what it is. It's on my professional record as to why I haven't bothered to remember, so I, I apologize for that, but I did try. <laughs> um, professional development in the last five years, scholarly is what they're looking for. So conferences, which you learned at conferences maybe, or learning or extra schooling, or so say you went and got some extra counseling classes since Wednesday likes to pay for our classes as well. Um, you have those opportunities and you want to note them. Also, scholarly would be considered training. So if you go to the Advising Training Academy, that's considered scholarly too because you're learning about your profession. Uh, service to departments, university, general, university and general public, last five years. So I have some community service that I've done outside of the university and some that I've done with the university. We do present you with opportunities to be able to participate in community engagement. So look for that. We're going to do it earlier this year so that uh, everyone can hopefully participate. Um, so. You want to list those on your professional record, which was the whole point. So for both areas, consult with others, hopefully your mentor or someone who you trust. Yes. Yeah. 
the service to departments. So, all right, I've only been here seven months. Yep. So five years I could go back to my previous employment. No. No, no, no you won't. You want university service for that. Oh, department. okay. Yep, yep. So, um, I do a couple committees in my within my department. Then I have a committee or two at the college level where I work, and then I have university committees that I've worked with. So I list my stuff. Yes, Mark. And uh, this, the, what you're doing now in the ASSC is also. Certain. Yes. Yes. So union, so union representation. You know, representing the union at, at um, academic staff, staff steering yes. committee, academic personal. What's the personal development? AC, 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 oh, ASPDC. 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 Yeah. Academic yeah. Staff Professional <coughs> Development Committee. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Academic Staff Professional Development Committee. I knew that one, but it just would not come yeah. out. If you want to join the Social Justice Committee. Yep. So there's, there's, there's a lot of options. Of course, if you don't know the options, you know, so that's why you want to talk about what so is there a list of committees? Somewhere? We have a, a whole seminar about that. Yep. Not committees mm -hmm. specifically, but a lot of the different things you can get involved in. And what is that? Uh, <laughs> right. right. So there are committees outside of your job. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. So um, my coworker, she's done promotion and tenure within our college. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. it's not quite a part of her job description, but she did that committee because you know she was interested in, in working with that committee. Gotcha. So when that time came around, she sat on that committee to determine promotion and tenure for some of our college people. It wasn't faculty though, it was academic staff. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Going back to the general public for service, I know sometimes people volunteer for their churches. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you explain more about that? Because I know I was having a conversation with a colleague and their supervisor said, oh, well, you know, we had problems with people putting that they, I mean, you know, they was in the church choir. Oh, no. Um, no, but, no, no, no. But if they're doing something for the community yeah, in that church. Yeah, like the soup kitchen. Yeah, say they have they a soup kitchen. Do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So no, I wouldn't put I, I sang in the church choir as volunteers. No, you are volunteering. It's more for the church than the community, which I guess the church could be considered community, but just don't put that. <laughs> soup kitchens, um, events that they're having that's out that the church is using to outreach to the community. Sure, why not? Absolutely. Um, I work with middle school and high school girls. Uh, they're plus size girls, and we're working with them with um, beauty, self image, health. You know, get, you know, are you guys getting out walking? That type of thing. So. It's even outside of the university, but it's something that I, I like volunteering for. So I definitely put that down, because that's time on my Saturdays. <laughs> Just to clarify a quick comment um, about going back five years. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, even if you worked at this university prior to your academic staff position, because yep. I did, um, but I, it was not academic staff, you do not put that on your professional record. It's only as an academic right. staff member yes. you go back up to five years. Okay. Um, so if you're only seven months, then you're only having seven months of what you've done. Yeah. Okay. Which you know you're not expect you're new, you know, new employee. Yeah. You only yeah. have maybe seven months or a year or two. You're not gonna have five years. Right. Okay. So, Emily? Well, I guess the five years seems that was confusing. I've been involved in a national conference for way longer than that, and I only show five years, it doesn't show the history. So I list it all, because otherwise it looks like I just started five years ago, even though I started way before that. Now it doesn't take up like, lines and lines of space. Right. I list a couple things, right. but because it shows history, mm -hmm. it, I, I started it before I came here as an academic staff, and I it's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Well, well, the these, are, yeah, these are suggestions okay. for people to give them a guideline where to start. Okay. You know, because I have some stuff, some stuff listed from 2008. I'm not going to hold you up. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> but either way, um, any other question? I have a quick yes. question. And I guess this is more specific. Me, because um, uh -huh. I work in the Dean of Student Office, uh -huh. and it's a very program heavy department. Yep. So I'm kind of serve as the liaison, one of my job mm -hmm. responsibilities is the liaison to the community and college, yep. the um, organization that volunteers mm -hmm. a lot. Even though that's in my job description, mm -hmm. but like on Saturdays sometimes I 
go and advise the student and help them out like with different community services. Mm -hmm. Would that be considered service to the community? Mm -hmm. See, I thought that would work. Okay. Since you're advising them, yeah. in my opinion, that would be okay. under your duties. I go on, on certain days and I advise students on these community events. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you go to the events? That yes, they I do. Yeah. Community service. Okay. I'm working at this event now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I want to counter on that. Yes. Yeah. That sometimes people say, well, since that was part of your duties, did you get comp time or did they adjust your time for that? We're on professional record right now. Oh, no. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying because sometimes supervisors will try to. Right. Stop. And that's a conversation they need to have. That's absolutely a conversation he would need to have. I'm not saying that, but professional record. <laughs>
annual review, your first year you're here, you're on a one-year contract. Years two and three and four and five, you would have a two-year contract. Once you get ESS, you do not get an annual review. So if anybody is trying to make you do one, call the union office. Okay, so I basically wanted to clarify to make sure everyone was clear on that. Cheryl, can you speak to the ones who do not get ESS or who do not eligible? That's, thank you very much, Maxine. There are some people, if you are on soft money, for example, like our TRIO programs, you do not get ESS because that's just part of the, of unfortunately, it's just that's part of it. So you are always going to be on a annual, is it two, what two years? You usually have a two year every year. So that's a very good point. Yeah, I, my department, I'm in it, for those of you who don't know, I'm in educational outreach. Educational outreach is the department that runs all of our off-site uh, extension locations through the Tri-County area. So uh, I'm more than happy if anyone wants, I cannot stay for the entire workshop, but uh, if at a later time anyone would like to reach out to me, I think I'm only Cheryl White, that's an employee, just do a search, but just look at it, educational outreach and you can uh, find it. Yes, Stacy. I just have a question about ESS. So, I think you go off sometime in January, like you said, you're... No, okay, let me clarify that. Okay. I'm glad before you get too far. ESS is not, is, is going to depend upon when your start date was. Okay. So it's not a set time. That's going to always change. The only, now, going up for uh, annual, our annual uh, selected <coughs> salary, thank you. Now that generally, and it still depends upon the department, but it should be the earlier part of the year mm -hmm. because the selective salary has to be confirmed by deadline in yeah. order to take effect the following August. So selective salary, just off the top of my head, I think you can, you go, can go up for it within six, seven months of your anniversary date. There's a timeline, I can't remember, at, but, but, but I would say this, don't depend upon anybody else in your department to remind you in ESS. Mm -hmm. My anniversary day is October 4th. So I already, I'm glad I really had good people in my office when I started that was sharp on all of this. So all of my mentors, you know, from day one, you know, because I had no idea. I, prior to Wayne State, I worked in two private institutions. They were not unionized, so we didn't have all of this. So I didn't know, I was like, a professional record, what is that? And ESS and all of these terms that I wasn't familiar with. But they were very good with, you know, letting me know what these things were. So again, I cannot emphasize enough. Find a mentor. If it's not in your department, find one outside of your department. And for those of you who are very new, in case you do not know, we do have an academic staff mentoring uh, program. Does Nina still here? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, so yeah, there should be some programming coming across for that. All I can say is all of this stuff is free. Take advantage of it when you can. And even if you can't attend, find somebody who wins. Mm -hmm. So I think that like our call, I just met our professional record and stuff, comes some, sometime in January. Who is so our? So are you in like, 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 sociology? Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. So I'm wondering if, okay, so you submit your materials. And I think that they found out, I don't know, maybe sometime in February if they got ESS or not. But that's not effective until the following academic year of your anniversary date, right? See, I think you're still confusing ESS and annual salary increases because ESS is, ESS is not supposed to be the same for everyone else. It's dependent upon your anniversary day. A, I was just going to say briefly, there's a timeline on the provost's website, mm -hmm. um, and that's when you back up you know, when to apply for ESS. It starts eight months. Yeah, I thought, okay, okay. I, was, I was close. I thought it was and you, yeah. you still have to have a professional record still right. for ESS, but I think what you're talking about is selective salary. Yeah, selective so salary. And that's, that's, that's when it hits all of our... Everybody <laughs> starts getting, like, my department's always late. My division, I should say. <laughs> we get ours about March, and it's usually due April or early May, right. somewhere. There, there is no financial adjustment with ESS. Right. right. You'll get extra money. That's just to say, you know, 
And you still have to put, like, look at your eight months, and you have to. Do you still submit a packet? Well, you yes, you do. You have to first. It is not a big. It's, it's not a big. It, it should not, should not the, be as The big. handout we gave you tells you what you submit with selective salary. It tells you what you submit with um, annual review if you're subject to <laughs> annual review. It also shows you what you submit with your promotion or your ESS uh, and, information. And you have to request of your supervisor. You have to say that you intend to go up for ESS. Yes. And yep. you right. Have to put a letter together yep. um, documenting, you know, why you deserve that. Mm -hmm. And that that is very, um, you know, detailed about your reasons for why you want that. And, you know, so did, any of us can <coughs> give you samples of what it looks like. So today was really to emphasize professional record. In other words, everybody in this room yep. has to use life right. as a professional yep. record. What you use it for, I think what Don was speaking to, will vary. So whether you use it for annual review, um, selective salary, ESS, or promotion, all those categories. Yeah. We will have a training on every single one. Yeah. So please come to the next one, because the next one's going to be annual review. So I already have the packet right now, if you'd like to pick it up right now, for our next month's um, uh, meeting for our annual review. And then we will also do selective salary, and also do promotion. We're doing them much earlier this cycle to get people prepared. We are also working on, the reason we didn't pass them out is because it is a working draft. We're letting lots of different people from lots of different departments look at this document. But we're trying to do exactly that. We're trying to do this and clarify a little bit of these things, terms, um, acronyms, dates. Um, some are university driven, some are individual driven, some are department driven. Mm -hmm. So we can't make this one document that can address all of those, but maybe at least let you know how they relate to each other. I have it. I'm a little hesitant to give it out because it is a working document. It's one of the things we're working on today so that we can create something that will have some coverage for you. So more stuff to come, even more reason to co uh, continue to come to these workshops um, throughout the year. You can also listen to my professional record. So continue to come, continue to participate. Give us feedback via your evaluations, what kind of questions you have and things of that nature. As well as if you have a question for us, put it on your evaluation with your access ID and we will contact you and give you a follow-up and or identify somebody that can maybe address your specific department question if it is in that specific to you. So please fill out the evaluations. Please put any questions you have for us. Please participate in ASSC and the other mentoring um, you know, programs and ASPDC alike. And I'm going to turn it back over to you because I know we also want to do some breakout. Can I, just, can I just interject with one thing? If you have a need for a mentor, or one mentor, um, you can always send the union office an email and we will connect you with Matt Fredericks and get that process started for you. Tammy, can you do a quick introduction and I'm going to do a shout out for Tammy for giving oh, us so much support stop. today. <laughs> but give, uh, can you introduce yourself real quick and I'm going to mark you up here next. <laughs> I'm Tammy Bors. I'm the executive assistant of the union office. I do everything from making coffee and clean up <laughs> to uh, Coordinating events. Do everything. And, <laughs> and if you call the union office, I'm usually the first person to grab the phone. Uh, sometimes Mark helps me if I need to focus on something. But, uh, you know, any questions, feel free to call. I'm happy to help with anything in regard to membership, in regard to questions about academic staff. Factors is always uh, sort of out there. So if you have a hard time determining what the factors are in your area, call me. I'm probably not going to be able to help you with that, but I will hook you up with the person who can help you with that, okay? Especially if you're new. I know there's so much coming at you all at once, and, you know, I don't want you to be out there wondering and spinning and, you know, just call. We'll, we'll get those answers for you and help you. We're happy to help. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm Mark Billy, a director of organizing, basically trying to make sure that we're all talking to each other about work and about how to solve issues and even proactively what we should be doing as a union to make the institution better for students in the city, the country, all that stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> resource for you. John, did you have folks assigned to the table? What's that? Did you have people assigned to the table? Or how would you like to um, Yeah, actually, um, one quick comment I'll say before we talk about signed tables is if you're new and you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed and not sure, honestly, that's going well. So don't worry. Everybody's felt that way, been in that position. We're all here to help you. We'll clarify everything. Um, so if you're not certain, you know, you know what not. Yeah. Um, so we have um, you sitting at different tables, and we have some like experts here that will kind of be going around the table to table to help you if you have questions 
about what we just covered, about your current professional record. Maybe you brought a copy of your professional record. Maybe you're not sure where to start. Um, we have over here Helen, Helen Wilson over here. And let's see, where are the other ones? Um, we have Cheryl White. I know she has to leave soon. Uh, Kristen um, is going to be leaving also in a little bit. Um, there's some of us that have already went through promotion. So we can definitely help you with professional record. Remember, this is just your first step say, before you go on to those other eight um, categories. So some of us have already turned our professional record in many times. Yeah. Um, we can give you feedback on that. Just and mentally, like, you've already went through Yeah, program. like next line. Um, I'm going to show you. So, Eat some more food. Let's do that. Um, yeah, and then we'll come around and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Okay. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you. See, I see I didn't have it. Thank you. 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 Yes, you should put those. But you know what? Since it's that, no, just put them on. Because they basically are looking for that. The bachelor's in the black. Okay. But you know what? That's what you do. Yeah, I'm sure. Now, 